Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. This time I, I brought in help. These two guys, they also have a YouTube channel. It's called Lecker Wissen, which is a German word, but they promised to also do German and English videos in the future. Yes, we will. Yes, Would sir. you please introduce yourself to my audience? My name is Simon. And I'm Edward. Uh, yes, and we're physicists. Yeah, we're physicists. We studied physics and we have a German YouTube channel about physics and we met Jörg and he said, well, calculate something, I'm going to build something and now we're here. So this is to uh, go back to my Roman slingshot video experience. Remember there was this, uh, this castle where the Caledonians defended it against the Romans that attacked it. And the Romans shot tons of balls like this 60 gram lead balls against uh, the castle. And uh, the castle was 120 meters far and it was 40 meters up. And uh, the slingers that shot these balls could shoot them with 45 meters per second, 160 kilometers an hour. And uh, so I tuned down my shots to test the impact to 35 meters per second to adjust a little bit for air resistance and so on. But I had a lot of people that said, you can't do that, that's not a viable test. So I asked these two guys to calculate, you know, in, in proper theory, <laughs> how, how fast these bullets are and what kind of angle you'd have to shoot them to hit the, uh, the castle. Okay, this is the ancient battle site of Burns work in Google. So let's go and take a closer look. And there it is. You can clearly see the south camp with the positions for the big trebuchets. And here you can see the uh, north camp. And this, and this part used to be very boggy and steep uh, back then. So uh, the defenders on top of this hill couldn't really avoid being besieged. And now if you switch over to 3D, you can get an impression about the lay of the land. And as you see, this is the part that was defended and this is the attack position. As you see, pretty good natural fort. And I'm absolutely amazed how well preserved these ruins are even though that is 1800 years ago. Still, you can clearly see the outline of the camp, both camps actually. All right, let's now do a little test. Click on 2D again, and then we say um, measure distance. So we click on this here, and now we drag it to that launch point. And as you see, it's just like Dr. Reed said, it's about 120 meters. And if we switch into 3D mode again, you can see that it's steeply uphill. So that is 40 meters higher than the launch position and 120 meters apart. So really the question is, what shot angle was necessary to hit people from here to here, where the defenders amassed? And that's what we want to find out. So that's what you guys did, right? That's what we did, yeah. Yes. And you can see all about it on their channel. And yes. you find the link down below if you want to see it. I recommend it. And it's even in English, isn't it? It is. It is. Okay. Well, anyway, so now you figured out that um, there are two angles where you can you can use to hit that, right? To yes. Hit that Simon knows the angles. Yes. Yeah, you can, you, know the uh, angles. you can hit um, at 38 or 45 degrees. So it's the flat shot. Yeah, it's yes. the flat shot, so you hit the wall of the castle. Or you can hit um, like very high and directly into the castle in about, I don't know, 61, 61 to 69 degrees. Oh, that's very high, very steep angle. Yes. Yes. So is. that would land this thing exactly 40 meters up and 120 meters far, right, from the, from the shooter. 69. 69 degrees would land at okay. 120 and 40. Okay. So the thing is that, of course, I don't have a 40 meter high castle. Oh. But we have this beautiful uh, target range here where we can shoot about flat. It's not really flat, it's maybe two, three meters difference. But if we prolong your curve, you know, then yes. we, you will be able to predict how far this is going to fly, right? Yeah. So to test your theory, that's what we're going to do. We we're did the calculations on our channel. Okay. The numbers. So the numbers are there. And the numbers the, are there. So the let's see if there. we're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and of course, to test it, 
I can't just sling it because that is not precise enough. And there would be so many white spots that would tell me you did this wrong and that wrong. <laughs> so I build a launcher to test it. And here it is. The Roman Mythbuster launcher. <laughs> Let me show you its features. So first of all, it's a quite long launcher. And I, I actually, I did it so that it fits in the bed of my truck. <laughs> and um, it is, uh, of course, outfitted with enough rubber to simulate the 45 meters per second shot speed that uh, Roman slingers could do. I also built in an inclinometer. So here you can see that we are already shooting a little bit upwards. Oh, let me. And we can adjust this in the angle so that we can get it exactly where these guys want it. I also built in a crony. So every shot is automatically uh, timed so that the white spots can't say uh, this one was probably slower or faster. So we know exactly if it's 45 meters per second or not. Of course, it has a built-in winch. This time it's homemade. It's not one that I bought in a store. And of course, it has a typical one-piece trigger lock system that I use all the time. And here you can see the angle adjustment. It's very simple. You simply lock it with a few screws. So uh, it's good enough for me. <laughs> this works quite simple. So this lever here, I can just put it to the front and then you can slide this whole thing up like this for loading it. And when you want to draw it back, you simply close this again and when you start winding, you see it automatically blocks. So it can only go in one direction. Very simple homemade winch. Let's start with the tests. All right, so the first prediction is that if we shoot this as at a 69 degree angle, it would fly how far? Around 130 meters. Okay, 130 meters plus minus a little bit. Yes. And of course we're shooting very slightly uphill, so we might have a five meter difference, so it might come in maybe 125 or so. But you see. guys have a table, so everything can be... We, we have a table, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll look it All up. All right, let's load the cannon let's and adjust load it. it. Well, that is a steep angle. Let's see. Okay, the shot came in at 43.91, so not quite 45 meters per second, but close enough. Okay, so it's not fully drawn out because we want to achieve just 45 meters per second. And uh, now we're going to fire it at that angle again. Okay, that was 44.44 meters per second, so very, very close. And we're going to do one more shot, so we have a couple of them uh, for uh, the precision of the tests. Okay, next test shot. And that came in at 45 meters 75. All right, let's hope these guys have it on tape. So, 105 meters. That is not meters. as far as you thought, right? No, that's not as far as we saw it. So maybe you have to go back to the drawing <laughs> book and, uh, <laughs> to <the> drawing board, yeah. <laughs> and figure out what happened. Because I think we have a light tailwind, actually. Yeah, a little bit of wind. I don't know the spin of the ball. Maybe it's the Magnus effects and stuff like this. Yeah, maybe. So you got, got, got some... Uh, Figuring some, uh, out to do. Yes, something to do, right. <laughs> well, then let's test the other angle and see how that performs. Okay, 45 degrees now. Okay. All right, so now we have adjusted it for the 45 degree angle, right? We have. And it's your prediction that this will go 200 meters far? Around 200, yes. Okay. Subtract a little bit because we're shooting uphill, but we'll find out. Ah, that shot at 46.69, so a little over 45 meters per second. And let's see. Quite far. And that was 45.34 meters per second. All right, now the third test shot. I see it too. Bum. And it was 44.70. That's really very accurate in terms of speed. I think I did a good job. And you think too? <laughs> 
All right, so this was about 155, 160 meters. Yes. So it's not as far as you predicted again. Right. So there must be an error in your calculation. And I think Maybe, yes. you have to find it out. Go study some more and let us know <laughs> what you find out. But anyway, what I find really interesting is that we were unable to find any one of these bullets. Even though spectators, you know, could could really say, you know, this is the point where it must have landed. But they disappear into the grass. And I think that is the reason why at this Roman site in Scotland, they didn't find all these uh, bullets without the help of a metal detector. So here, I think it's untraceable. We don't know. We have recorded some of the hits on slow motion, so we, we can really uh, you know, say something about the distance, but we cannot find the ammunition. It's gone. Bye-bye. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you like this. Make sure you watch these guys' videos down there. <laughs> and thanks and bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so here we have a website that can simulate trajectories. And actually it includes air resistance. That's very interesting. Now that the boys have corrected the error in their calculation, we know that this is the correct value for the 22 mm lead ball. And we also know that 45 degrees was the right angle. Okay, now first let's simulate the 69 degree shot angle and fire. And you see that just like we saw in our test, it ended at 107 meters. Now that was a little bit uphill. So the 105 meters that we achieved is perfectly fitting. But we also see that it didn't go far enough to reach 120 meters. So let's see the next value. They wanted us to shoot at 45 degrees and fire. And as you see, it went more far, but it also ended at 155, 160 meters. Keep in mind that was a little bit uphill. And also again at 120 meters, you see that the shot was only 36 meters four. This means it was not hitting the fort. It was landing short of it. So it turns out the only angle that works is about around 50 degrees. So if we type in 52 degrees and fire, then you see that at 120 meters, then at 120 meters, we got just about the right value. So at 120 meters, we have 41.4, uh, we have uh, 40.8. So these are the values for 120 meters. And that would be just perfect to hit people. So this at 45 meters per second with that lead ball is the only chance. What I find very interesting is that with 45 meters per second and that ball, you cannot hit 140 meters uh, altitude from more than 120 meters away. Even at 125 meters, there's no way that you can get as high as 40 meters. So it turns out, if we go back to the Google Maps, it turns out that they put the entire lay of the camp close enough to hit people here with the array within the range of their slingers. They couldn't really go one meter more distant because then they would be out of reach up here. And that makes sense. The Romans knew perfectly well what they were doing. But it is never, nevertheless very, very interesting to see how smart they are. And what I find really interesting is that if you look at the um, curve again, let me do that for you, you can clearly see that the end result, the end speed, of the bullet was 36 meters 4. So this means my test shots that I did for impact tests uh, while John was visiting with 35 meters per second is absolutely valid. So just by instinct I found just the right value. <laughs> I love being right.